Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're going to continue the Choose to Lose campaign. Campaign where we're trying to beat the game on the hardest difficulty uh, without dropping a beat. We have uh, made it more difficult for us with less equipment, less uh, hit points, less classes and niche builds plus stronger enemies with ABA and uh, better chosen this is the very last room uh, now it's time to pause the video and leave your predictions just uh, how many wounds we're going to take i think it uh, is fair to say that we're going to kill all three of the avatars but uh, the question is how many wounds uh, is the team going to take leave a comment down below and uh, let's get right into it we got our team ready and prepped for the great occasion. I don't see you running anywhere. Words moves up. Jessica Rabbit Jones Understood. moves Moving up in quick feet. Very much moves up as well. Good. We already know there is a pack ahead of us, and we already know that with mind control, having that extra Archon would be fantastic. But that's just not how it's going to go today. So careful. Okay, the reason why I am carefully moving over here is because there is some sweet, sweet high ground that I would like to take. Jessica can already grapple up, that's good. Come on, the moves there. Okay. Movement ahead. Holding. Getting reports from across the globe, Commander. Advent forces are hitting back hard. Our Good. We're moving up because we're also getting reports from across the globe. And we got to deal with those guys and we better deal with them fast. This looks more like it. Finally, a better advent is back. Uh, this here uh, looks like we have some interesting enemies going. Overwatch covering fire. What else are we dealing with? An Archon Prime. Okay, okay. Good. I think. I think we could just deal with the overwatch shots quite easily. Grapple here. Okay, well. Apparently, the Sentinel waits for someone to take a shot. And I'm okay doing that as well because. Uh, we do have this little tra uh, trait here, lightning reflexes. Okay, well, so much for the overwatch. Okay, cool. We're definitely going into overdrive. Uh, first target that needs to die is the avatar. That's not even a question about that. Shredding it down. Still two armor left. Can't reach him there, okay. Good. This here should deal some damage and shred him. There we go. Rage Strike Shreds, for those of you who were unaware. And that was a free action as well. A 
Let's continue hitting the avatar, poisoning it. Very good. Okay, so if we were to move up here, hmm, we could move up to here. Yeah, I think that's not a bad position. We would have that side here firmly under control. That would be a crit because uh, it's a psionically active enemy. And the chosen rifle always crits against psi active enemies. Okay, and this is sort of the situation that we were looking for. Getting up here. Getting those sweet, sweet resets from death from above. Oh, nice. He removed some cover for us. Thanks a bunch. And there is the kill we were looking for. Wonderful. Death from above and in placeable at the same time. Archon Prime is the next target, I wonder. I do have an idea of how to deal with it. Since it has the prime reactions, we want to freeze it. Okay, the idea did not work as intended. He will potentially fly in and be annoying as hell. So, moving a bit closer. I don't really like the positioning, but Frostbite might be well worth it. There we go, and that essentially trivializes uh, the encounter, luckily, because now we can fully go for him <clears throat> without uh, fearing any repercussion. Quick feed moves in. Hmm. That's a great question. I almost like the idea of killing him. Unfortunately, too greedy. That didn't work out. He's nicely marked now, so... We can hit it. And that is a potential kill. Are we going to rupture? No, I think we're going to use rupture a bit later. So let's just hit the prime. Target eliminated. Funnily enough, we're killing him regardless. And that Archon Sentinel, I'm not going to use Dual Strike yet either. That's for the Avatars. Just a little off. Okay, let's try to kill him. If not, we're still okay. And I'm surprised about just the amount of damage that our team can put out even without quote-unquote uh, OP items. So not bad at all, not bad at all. We do have, unfortunately, do not have Death From Above here. Jessica, how are we going to get you up there? Potentially not.
We'll figure something out as we go. Time to set up a few of them for some kills. That's one. And we got some nice little saturation fire. That should hit two further, guys. There we go. Okay, so all of them are set up properly. That's that from above. I would like one, two, three, four. Yeah, let's position ourselves here. Next turn we can get back on top. Now is a good time for cereal. Just to do that nice little cleanup here. There we go. Good. We unfortunately got to reload. Ah, but we still got a free reloader. Okay, cool. Very good. Good. Moving up. <clears throat> this might be a straight up kill. 92% chance of critting. Oh yeah, that's very much a kill. Enemy destroyed. Air action free trigger. Love it. Can we do something with it? No, we can't even like go and slash someone. Another straight up kill. Okay, cool. Well, I can tell you what we can do, because they are psionically active, that's going to be a crit as well. <laughs> okay, cool. And I didn't even need to uh, to move Primus whatsoever. Question is, do we want to stand together or divide it? I think for now we're good to go. Just using a reload here. I think we're going to let Jessica move over here. That's a better high ground position. And Quick Feet begins to move further over here. That way we're solidly like camping the southern corner. And we got all of the needed high ground. Okay, unfortunately the game crashed and I needed to replay that last turn to the best of my abilities. Uh, with ABA it seems that the last <coughs> room is highly instable. I don't know why, but uh, maybe it's the mess up of the spawns. It just doesn't look really, really uh, good. So, I'll try to do my best to still uh, keep recording. We got uh, the second avatar here, which is an interesting option for us to uh, hopefully hit him and start basically chewing him down right away. The rest of the pack more or less spawned there and is waiting to be taken care of. Okay, so 
The beauty of Salvo comes into play. When we're now going to hopefully hit all of this here. Let's just remove as much cover as possible. No use running. And that's exactly why v v uh, Frodo is having that rage suit. Bam. Everybody is shredded. Do we have over um, load already? Overdrive already? No, we don't. Okay. Well, nonetheless, I think we want to shred him. So that's the right way to go. Very good. Uh, we're definitely going... Well, we could also use the Wild Strike. Hmm. Not a bad idea. But we're going to do it triggered from down here. A, because we can take a better angle. And B, because we still have the action left over uh, with Wurz. So that's a miss, unfortunate, but we're going to have a partnering shot from here. There we go. I wonder why he's not marked. We got holder targeting, so well, it should have worked. Can we kill him from here? Two, four, six, uh, barely. Okay, moving up. Avatar down to 1 HP. And that could be a combat protocol if we so decide to. On Before we're doing that though, <clears throat> let's take the high ground here. Mutant eyes, death from above. Very good. Down. Moving a bit closer. We can't just this pull, we could also just hit. That's good enough, and I think it's now in leather range yes there we go again death from above We put Icarus uh, jump and basically grenade. Oh, that's a nice option. I like it. I think we don't have enough reloads left over uh, to um, to reload again. But we can't figure that out. You know what? Let's do that. <clears throat> Immediate Viper kill. I don't mind that. Got him. Good. Do we have a free reload? And Still going. Can't hit or kill that Viper. Avatar. We could kill, but... Uh, he's not on low ground at the moment. Yeah, 
Yeah, I guess Ikoro suit is is still fine. We we can do it. So repositioning, advanced teamwork. Yeah, and let's get rid of this entire section here. Good, that's a kill. Second avatar is down. Still got Implaceable, a fantastic option. <clears throat> I like where, we're, where we are. Let's hit that Spectre here. Good one. We could go and kill the Spectre or <coughs> the Mutant. I think we can't get both. Let's get the mutant and call it a good day. Enemy destroyed. Yeah, we could hit him, but potentially not kill him. That Viper can only move once, so we're not in danger by sending here. I think we're good. We'll simply move down here. That way we're definitely not in danger. Ooh, triple Andromedon. Well, that's a nasty pack. Bladestorm? Yes, no. Well, if we had revival protocol, things would not be a problem at all. It was trying to do the Shadow Melt, then the AI realized that that is impossible. So it instead decided to simply go for the, the simpler alternative, which is taking a shot. Hundred percent, and there is a really good chance to crit him. Fair enough. Thank you, Talon Rounds. You never really disappoint. Good. Time to get into a good position over here, and time to shred these guys, like big time. Can't really do much other than shredding, I suppose. Good, we gotta deal with all of uh, the Andromedons, so might as well start with very much removing the cover here. And that was a fantastic hit. Good, let's set them up. That's one. 
And that is two. Wartz moves up. One more round until the Avatar pops back in. For now, time to kill the Andromedons. Thanks to death from above, we have plenty of reset options. As long as these guys are spawning on, on the bottom floor, we're fine. The, problem, the more problematic ones are the one up here, for instance. But we can handle that as well. Could theoretically pull ourselves over here. Hmm, not bad. This here is potentially better. I don't... Hmm. I don't like the lack of cover here, but we could move over here and get cover. All right, let's do that. Really good position. Good, 100%, almost 100%. Let's kill this Andromedon. There we go. Thanks to the AP rounds, we're good. Secondly, um, let's give over advanced teamwork. Another free reload. Okay, good. Might as well dual strike these guys. Okay, so what else do we have left over? We got the commander here. Taking high ground. That's pretty much it. Hmm, what's... It's going to be tough. So, could we kill this guy? Yes, we can. And that should be death from above. Reset. Okay, I do have an idea how we're going to deal about uh, with that. This here is setting the shell up this should be a kill kill confirmed oh hair trigger fantastic that's good my problem is i think i'm out of free reloads and that was the last action that we had. Oh, wow. Three Andromedons with almost no cooldowns. That's harsh. Very, very harsh. Needed to uh, blow the majority of our cooldowns just to get those guys shredded. And if you think about it, each of them uh, with four armor and like effective 50 hit points, that's 150 hit points, and we didn't have much AoE besides uh, the Shred Storm Cannon. Oh, 
Okay. That's two wounds for those of you who were uh, leaving a comment. And thankfully they are starting to shred one another. Very good. Good, yeah, we're we're out of um, reloads, unfortunately. But we're not out of absolutely incredible hits. And death from uh, from above is still triggering. Even from here. Good, we're down to one ammunition. It's going to be a little problem going forward, but for now, shotgun to the face. Nice. Hair trigger comes just at the right moment for reload okay we're going to see a few replicas now but that's okay we do have death from we have plenty of death from above so we should be fine 100 here Should have reloaded first, but I think we still got an outloader. That's another potential kill. Fantastic. Death from above into a reload. Okay. Let's set up the mutant. Alright. Let's kill the mutant. Okay, so Primus moves all the way up here. One more round, then we do have overdrive, which will potentially be needed. teamwork to get our sniper back activated comment protocol yeah let's let's bite the bull yeah no let's not do that it is more intelligent to do it this way as a zero percent crit chance unfortunately death from above whom can we hit That's a 50-54 kill. It's good. That's a low chance for a straight up kill. Will the death of this one that was the only uh, one of our soldiers who could effectively reach the guy and there is a chance a very small chance to immediately kill but of course it was just a very small chance however I've planned ahead combat protocol into the remaining codex takes care of the one back there 
The reason why I'm so particular about killing codices is uh, with their psionic bomb, they will cause us a lot of momentum. And I want to make definitely sure that we are ready for the... Uh, For the avatar that's going to come up there's nothing worse than needing to be uh, needing to reload etc etc kill zone into this direction just in case someone comes up are you kidding me Should have potentially kill zoned into this direction. All right, more codices. And those guys move as a pack. So far, we have not yet fully engaged them. Is there any cross map play that we could do in order to get to them? Well, yes, with uh, dimensional rift, but we decided to not use that. Okay, so I suppose a protocol and then, just because it is too good to not try it, I want that sector pot. If we fail, we will just focus and kill him first. But if we succeed, this is going to be fun. Ooh. Ooh. 30% chance to succeed. And there we go. All right, fantastic. Well, hello there, Mr. Sectopod. Nice to meet you. Time to shred the rest here. Both of the Andromedons are well shredded. I think we need to reload. Yeah, okay. Well, that's unfortunate. All right. Uh, let's set the guys up for some for some fireworks. That's affirmative. Moving up here. Ah. <sighs> I hate the hit chances. Should have potentially just moved in and uh, used Rashi. Unfortunately, Rashi does not mark the guys, and that's what I was looking for. Good setup. And another setup. Hmm. Moving all the way over here. Let's kill one. There we go. Vortz is absolutely rocking it this time. Two, four, six, eight, nine. All right, hail of bullets it is. Sometimes you just want those 100% shots.
Okay, so let's continue to hit each of the Andromedon shells and hit them really well. That could be a kill. Reloading, because we have no further free reloads, and this might be a kill. Nope. But we got hair, tr uh, hair triggered. Alright, setting him up nicely. We can still go into a cover position. Can't see the other shell. And I want to make sure that we're not going to get absolutely shredded. So let's move back. I don't want the mind control to eventually affect us. All right, moving over here. Okay. There we go. So, a couple of elite specters. A few mutants are double moving in. Nothing that we can't deal with, uh, but our main target is anyways going to be that pesky avatar. <laughs> Funny, he doesn't know where to go to. That's okay. More codices. Let's go, guys. Let's go. So, high stance is free action. Reload is another one. Okay, we can't hit anyone yet. Uh, fair enough. I think I would like to start with shredding this good avatar here. That also forces him to reposition. We'll test the of that armor. Oh, interesting, pos interesting position over there. Super target rich environment. Holy shit. Could we clean up? But the only relevant target is the avatar. Comet protocol. Reaches him nicely. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Not going to take any chances with him positioning in a in an obstructed full cover slot. Oh, that's a bad position, my friend. Moving up with the sector pod. I potentially shouldn't have moved up that far. Challenge there is the sector pod's line of, uh, uh, line of sight. Also gives the avatar a chance to further teleport into a different direction. It's okay. Not the end of the world. Trying to grapple the avatar for some burning damage. They are only 
It's not that we'll uh, continue or let him continue to stay here. He still goes somewhere else. Um. Hmm, let me see. I think this is the game winning play. Double move in there, which completely exhausts his actions, then advanced teamwork. And then we're just chain shotting. First one already seals the deal. So the correct answer was two wounds, is what we've taken. And that concludes the Choose to Lose campaign, where we've uh, indeed valiantly fought against a, bit, a little bit stronger and better Advent. Overall, uh, what's the verdict of the campaign? We were trying to do niche builds, we were trying to do a high lethality campaign, we were originally trying to do or intentionally trying to set, up, uh, set us up with suboptimal uh, builds. Let's look at uh, how that turned out, at least in my book. I think the uh, yeah niche builds, so to speak, worked relatively well uh, after a bit of getting used to the new skills. Some of them actually worked out relatively nice. Um, take for instance the Ranger and uh, the ability, the Reaper ability on, on the Ranger tree, which allows him to stay hidden, uh, which nicely countered one of the dark events and always gave us another scout when the actual Reaper as in the Reaper class was not available. Another good example is just uh, how the class abilities turned around. Wards, for instance, uh, being an incredibly aggressive uh, death from above finisher, as opposed to what you're uh, to, what you would uh, typically see in a in a normal uh, campaign where the sniper takes uh, that role entirely even with the niche builds uh, it was possible beating the game which uh, kind of shows that you can have a build preference but the weaker skills are still very much serviceable so i would say that's a big tick mark uh, second uh, intention was uh, showing suboptimal uh, equipment because we're typically seeing the same equipment over and over and I think the campaign definitely delivered on that piece uh, I found out uh, just how the ultrasonic lures are working we've seen re-stealthing and uh, and, uh, and and the strength of it on the reaper uh, allowing the reaper essentially to stealth even when being spotted out in in the same uh, round so that was great and got me uh, thinking about kind of having a different perspective on, on the item. Sustenance Sphere certainly has delivered specifically towards the end game to counter kind of a higher lethality and allowing us to play more reckless with the Rangers and still use that. That being said, uh, there were still a few items that I could not even, uh, when trying hard, could not uh, make work. For instance, the uh, flamethrowers, I really tried. Uh, first of all, they are incredibly uh, difficult to get because there is a lot of RNG involved. Secondly, why why would you ever use that item? Uh, so it was quite hard to, to, uh, to really make that work. Anyways, I think overall, uh, net net, the campaign delivered well on the the portion of just showcasing uh, these other items. And then finally, the train of thought around whether or not it was a high lethality and, and a more difficult campaign was the first time that I played with a better advent and a better chosen. Um, we should therefore kind of lump that into the verdict there. So on the pro side, I have seen that the game definitely became more interesting in, in the end game stage. However, at the same time, it was not that high lethality um, setup that I was originally envisioning when reducing the hit points by half uh, from our side. I was hoping to see more one-shots and essentially being forced to uh, to use 
either those hit point PCSs or <clears throat> the sustenance spheres. That was not the case. It was still very much doable um, to, to go through the game and take a few hits here and there. So the, the idea that I had did not fully transpire. So the lethality of it. Did it uh, eventually hurt the campaign? Potentially not. Uh, it was still fun to, uh, to go th uh, through the missions, but it was not that slaughterhouse meat grinder type of uh, environment that I originally thought it would be. Um, towards mid and end game, uh, we had it very much firmly under control. Then lastly, the verdict on a better advent and a better chosen. I can definitely see why the mods are popular. I, I think they are incredibly well thought through. The variety of enemies is uh, refreshing to say the least. Uh, although we haven't seen all of them counter uh, our uh, our moves, uh, let alone having four different types of uh, archons or let alone having three to four different types of vipers and just so much more advent uh, presence with uh, these nuanced a bit more um, a bit more uh, a bit more focused builds from their uh, side that really was enjoyable um, my criticism uh, towards a better advent uh, would be i like the idea of uh, the the primes to be a real threat and i get it uh, they they were su uh, supposed to do that I uh, I definitely dislike the lack of counterplay abili uh, abilities that were available. I looked online and essentially the net net of it is the author uh, Derb um, of that mod uh, indicated you got to freeze or stun them, uh, which on paper looks great. But if you then look a little bit deeper into you basically have one um, freezing grenade, which is a unique item. You have one freezing um, pulse whiplash from the serpent suit, which is a unique item. And in terms of stun, besides EMP, you have tier two melee weapons, and that's pretty much it. I think that it's, from a design perspective, not very well thought through to have unique items um, as, as your excuse of how to deal with in-game challenges, because it uh, really will A, make them more uh, valuable, and once you have lost them over the course of a campaign, you're you're getting further and further behind and b uh, it just doesn't allow you to equip correctly for a mission suggestion here would be um, if you want to go through um, uh, through that and just make frozen the counterplay against that there needs to be an ability to create more freezing grenades wouldn't have changed much in this run other than allowing the freezing grenade to be available uh, for the second and the third team as uh, as well and there needs to be um, a grenade or at least another item that reliably stuns just like the long uh, in uh, the long war the arc thrower from the rangers so that was my my uh, one criticism around the primes the second criticism around the primes was I think uh, that they are still not fully uh, functioning. Sometimes it was a bit buggy. And my third uh, mm, criticism around them would be that although I like the idea of the prime speed, um, some abilities, at least in my perspective, should not trigger that, specifically automatically triggering abilities such as Bladestorm or free abilities, because the, the original intent of those abilities was to counter the primes. So I would much rather like to see those changes uh, in there um, so that the axe uh, as well as uh, the, uh, the, uh, the free abilities just like quick draw would still be a valid counter just like they would be with the alien rulers. Final, uh, finally, um, I think from an implementation perspective, uh, also the bolt gun uh, should affect them uh, more uh, more so than, than it uh, does now to eff effectively make them a bit of a weaker version of the actual alien rulers. That being said, if you take uh, the criticism of the primes out and uh, the stability issues, uh, which uh, potentially were on my side because I'm not using mods that often, I think overall, there couldn't be an argument uh, made that both a better advent and a better chosen enriched the gameplay. So I was excited uh, to play with them. Um, they get kind of a B, uh, B maybe B plus uh, rating uh, due to kind of those small 
disadvantages, but overall an enriching experience. And that brings us to the end of uh, this episode. Um, if you have stuck around uh, to the very end, I would ask you to leave a comment uh, down below and tell me what kind of campaign you would like to see in the future. That's always a, a great place uh, to gather ideas and get me started on the next campaigns. Uh, in terms of uh, this campaign, uh, you can see we needed to go an extra mile. Uh, we were pretty much in line with most of uh, the other sets. We lost quite a few double agents. Uh, we were in line with uh, many of the remaining sets. Killed all chosen. Uh, needed to fight much, much longer. Uh, but that's a legendary uh, problem. And uh, potentially didn't have as many in involved faction heroes in terms of kills. Many more soldiers uh, that saw action, uh, maximum number of scientists and engineers that the game typically gives you, and a bit slower than the average, but that's okay, that is a typical a legendary thing. We bought more items from the back market and we conquered the entire world, so overall, quite good. Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, as always, if you enjoy the content, feel free to support the channel and uh, leave an active comment down below. See you in the next run and uh, take care.